This is a lovely case that uh, doctors Michael Cardis and y y Yon Han Ho um, shared with us uh, on the key derm using the Kiko platform. And I, I thought it would be a great case to look at to just talk a little bit about problems with melanocytic lesions. It's very difficult when you start out in pathology. Uh, there are so many different melanocytic lesions, so many benign ones, and then when we think of melanoma, there are so many variants of melanoma that it can be very confusing. And I sometimes think that melanocytic pathology could easily be a, a subspeciality in its own right. Certainly, the potential for misdiagnosis is high, particularly if you report things at scanning magnification. Uh, the chances of litigation are, 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 are pretty sub substantial, and it's often proposed that most uh, dermatopathologists at some point in their career will get sued for a misdiagnosed melanocytic lesion, and I think that's probably right. Uh, the biggest problem really, you know, is, is just not giving lesions enough time down uh, under the microscope. Uh, every lesion's worth giving a minute or two's time just to make sure that you're not being fooled by uh, a melanoma masquerading as a nevus. Anyway, this is a lovely case, and um, what you can see is a, a wedge-shaped infiltrate with the base uppermost, and in fact it's pushing up the overlying epidermis, so you can be sure that this presented as a heavily pigmented dome-shaped papular nodule. So the base appears uppermost, and then the lesion extends down deeply into the dermis, with this rather triangular appearance. Now, when you look at this, uh, to my mind, the most obvious diagnosis is going to be a deep penetrating nevus because that's what this looks like. Having said that, uh, it's important to remember that combined nevi can look exactly the same, and in fact, sometimes it's very difficult distinguish, distinguishing between a combined nevus and a deep penetrating nevus. Blue nevi, cellular blue nevi can look a bit like this, as can melanoma. And the last is of particular importance because you really don't want to miss that. So uh, you always look very carefully to make sure there's nothing in the in the um, specimen that, that would make you think more of a melanoma. So I'm going to enlarge it. And here we have a nice view. And the I suppose the most important thing you can notice is there's no intraepidermal or junctional component. The entire lesion is dermal. And so that's a source of some comfort uh, when you're worrying about a melanoma. And this view just highlights the shape of the lesion and there is an erect or PD muscle, and this is very typical of a, of a deep penetrating nevus. The infiltrate extends along the, the uh, follicular structures. It also sometimes extends along the neurovascular bundles. Uh, and this led Ray Barnhill to give the tumor a different name. He called them uh, spindle cell plexiform. Nevi, and I think both terms are e e equally applicable. Now I will enlarge this a little bit more. Uh, in fact, we may as well just go to the top magnification and see what we're looking at. So here's the surface of the lesion, and at the very top you can see these very heavily pigmented melanophages or macrophages, and it's hard to make out much cellular detail because of the density of the pigment. Now, underneath, I think this is a very characteristic appearance, they're epithelioid forms, uh, and they have very finely granular melanin pigmentation. And this often gives um, deep penetrating nevus a rather greenish appearance, 
and that's very very typical so if you see this type of change the chances are highly likely that you were looking at a deep penetrating nevus now the other features you can see uh, at this magnification are um, there's mild nuclear pleomorphism as a binucleate cell there and um, Occasional cells have intracyto intranuclear cytoplasmic pseudo inclusions, and those are a common feature of um, deep penetrating nevi. There's a hint there that you may be looking at some balloon cells where the cytoplasm is a bit more bubbly, and that can be a feature of uh, deep penetrating nevi, as can clear cells. So if we, if I just go back down the magnification a bit, and we want, I just want to come over here, in this part of the lesion, we see the other cell type rather more clearly. There are, there are certainly dendritic cells, and dendritic cells are, are a feature of deep penetrating nevi. But the other cells that I wanted to draw your attention to are these spindle cells at the edge and towards the base of the lesion. And these form the, the, the second component. So at the top we have epithelioid cells, and as the lesion descends towards the deeper reaches of the lesion, spindle cells become predominant. Now I searched very hard throughout this lesion and I couldn't I couldn't find a single mitotic figure. Um, I couldn't see any lymphovascular invasion or perineural infiltration. So I'm pretty happy that this is a deep penetrating nevus. Uh, if you had some unstained sections, which we didn't in this case, you, you might have looked for beta-catenin staining, which would clinch the diagnosis. Now I'm going to come out of Kiko and have a look at, a, uh, if I can find it, if I can get at it, have a look at a a short PowerPoint presentation um, just to talk a little bit about uh, deep penetrating nevi and combined nevi. Now a deep penetrating nevus is a fairly rare lesion. Uh, it may be seen in pretty much any age group but mostly there are patients in the second and third decades. And the clinical picture on the right which I borrowed from uh, pathology of the skin courtesy of Elsevier shows a, a lovely example. It's very, very dark staining. It's sharply circumscribed and it's uh, presenting as a, as a nodule. Mind you, clinically a blue nevus would look just, just the same, but the important thing is it's circumscribed and uh, sharply delineated, so that makes you more comfortable that this is a benign lesion. Sometimes combined nevi, combined uh, deep penetrating nevus with something else, um, may have a less homogeneous coloration and you may get paler brown areas and that can be a bit worrying clinically. Now this is the nicest example I've ever seen of a deep penetrating nevus and if we look at it, it's, whoops, it's, uh, it's got exactly the same features as the uh, as the first one. It's wedge shaped with the uh, bay, with the broadest aspect uppermost, and then it's got these deeply penetrating components spreading down along the neurovascular and bundles and follicular structures to give rise to this this wonderful appearance. And there's a a slightly closer up view to show the the uh, deep aspect of the lesion, and you can see it's actually got down to the subcutaneous fat. And on the right, we can see that this is actually a combined lesion. There is a, a focus of type B nevus cells, as you would see in a banal regular nevus. And on the right, we can see the deep penetrating component. And uh, superficially, in this in this stain, the, the cytoplasm has got a rather brownish appearance, whereas as one moves down the lesion, uh, the cytoplasm becomes less pigmented. Uh, we can see the nuclear ple pleomorphism, uh, and as we go deeper, the spindle cells start to pop up. 
And here's a, 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 a nice view to co contrast the top of the lesion with the bottom of the lesion. So pigmented epithelial cells at the top and spindle cells at the bottom. And there's, there are two high power views just highlighting the, the spindle cell component. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned, uh, mild and very focal nuclear pleomorphism is not something that should worry you too much, provided the rest of the lesion doesn't worry you. It's like everything else, you need to take things in context. So if this was present all over the place, then you start looking for mitotic figures and you'd be very worried about a melanoma. But if these are just scattered here and there, and there's perhaps one or two mitoses, and the overall growth pattern is as I've showed you earlier, then I don't think I get too worried about it. Now this lesion contained two mitotic figures, but I couldn't find any any anywhere else. And although it's an archival case, so it's rather difficult to give you very accurate follow-up. Suffice it to say that uh, I never heard anything more about it. And I suspect that if this had been a melanoma, it would have recurred and or metastasized. So I think, again, we, we take this in context. If the, if the lesion looks like a deep penetrating nevus and there's just one or two mitoses, then I wouldn't worry. But I think when you find them, it is that the message is look for other things that might cause you concern. So uh, to summarize deep penetrating nevus, and this is another example on the right, this is a combined one with a dermal nevus at the top and a blue and a deep penetrating nevus at the bottom. Um, I wanted to stress combined lesions uh, can be a problem. It can be very difficult sometimes to be sure whether you're looking at a deep penetrating nevus or a combined nevus. And provided it's, it's uh, not showing any worrisome cytological features, then I suppose it doesn't really matter very, very much. But uh, if you can, uh, look at beta-catenin beta staining, and it'll be positive in a deep penetrating nevus and negative in a, in a blue nevus. And um, again, just to, to highlight that you may see focal cytological atypia, occasional normal mitosis. This is another one. Uh, uh, it's a combined lesion, and this is the uh, dermal melanocytic common or garden nevus variant, and there's a, a mitotic figure in the, in the middle. And there's a lovely, two lovely papers that I've mentioned at the bottom there, and they're very useful, they're very informative about the mutations that one sees in deep penetrating nevus. And uh, it's, it, it's important to realize that uh, almost all deep penetrating nevi will show nuclear and sometimes membranous staining with beta-catenin. And here's a lovely case that George Bayless posted a, 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 a couple of weeks ago, and it, it's a prototypical deep penetrating nevus. Again, the, the broad base is uppermost, and then it tapers to a point along this follicular structure here. So it's a lovely lovely pointed wedge-shaped lesion. Uh, and uh, uh, on the top right, you can see even, uh, even superficially, there are lots of spindle cells. And in this field, they're following the neurovascular bundles. And then in these images, you can see lots of pigmented melanophages. You can see de dendritic cells. Uh, you can see the spindle cells. And here it's following a nerve a nerve fiber, and there it's following the outside of a vessel. So that's a typical deep penetrating nevus. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, you've got to be awfully careful that you don't mistake um, a melanoma with a deep penetrating nevus-like growth pattern for a deep penetrating nevus, or you'll get into real trouble, as will the patient. 
Uh, that melanoma with deep penetrating nevus-like features are extremely rare. And the best example I've ever seen was um, uh, was was one that I used in pathology of the skin, and I remember this quite well. It was from a young lady. She was in her late twenties, and this this presented in her skin, and it was thought to be a blue nevus clinically. And um, well, you can see it's got this deep penetrating nevus-like growth pattern. But unfortunately, it's got wild nuclear pleomorphism, both at the top, the middle, and the deep aspect. There were mitoses throughout, including abnormal forms, and there's one there. Uh, so I reported this as a melanoma with deep, penetrate, deep penetrating nevus-like features. Now, she was from Australia, and she went back to Australia, and she had the case reviewed by one of the uh, melanoma laboratories there, and they agreed with the diagnosis, but she was then, her, her care went to Australia, so I never heard what happened next. Now, in contrast, uh, just to show you a few examples of combined nevus. Now, combined nevus, the term, all it means is a nevus which shows two or more different phenotypes, and it can be pretty much a mixture of anything you like. Spitz nevus may have common banal nevus in it, may have blue nevus in it. Um, banal nevi may have blue nevi, it may have deep penetrating aspects. Sometimes you get a mixture of all three. I, I've seen a, a, a banal nevus composed of type B cells with a bit of very obvious common blue and a bit of deep penetrating, so it can be pretty much anything it likes. And it doesn't matter. That's the important thing. Uh, to combine nevus doesn't imply any any alteration in biological potential. It's just to recognize that uh, multiple phenotypes may, may be present. And sometimes, as in this example, it's obvious there are type B cells, so that's the banal nevus, and there's a, a blue nevus to the side. And this is a lovely example uh, shared with me by Eduardo Colonge. And here you can see it's, it's um, banal, common, common nevus, and then there are great chunks of heavy pigmentation, and this, these represent blue nevus components. There's the, the uh, ban banal nevus, there's the blue nevus. And if we look at, co uh, at high power, there are type B nevus cells there, and these contrast with the dendritic forms uh, of the blue nevus. And this one, this example, when I first looked at it, I thought this was probably a, a blue nevus, and then I looked a bit more carefully, and I could see that there were common, common banal nevus components, so therefore it then became a combined lesion in my mind's eye. And then I looked a bit further, and there's the type B cells, but over here, there are rather, it's got this spindly morphology in it. They're aiming in this wedge-shaped growth pattern, so I thought I was probably dealing with a combined banal and deep penetrating nevus, but I'm not absolutely sure on that. And there's a high part view showing you the same this the same thing. I suppose if I had to put a bet on it, I'd bet on a deep penetrating nevus. But unfortunately this is an archive case, so I can't do beta catenin. And this is another combined another combined banal and deep penetrating nevus, and it's beautiful banal at the top, deep penetrating at the bottom. And there are higher power views showing the typical banal nevus. And on the right, you can see the uh, deep penetrating nevus component becoming very spindle as one goes down. And there's another view showing banal con contrasting with deep penetrating nevus. And lastly, just to remind you that when you're looking at combined nevi, you may find mitotic figures. And in my experience, that it's most often 
When you see mitosis, it's, it's most often a combined banal and deep penetrating nevus. And it's important if you find one, look for others. And if you find others, your index of suspicion should go up. And so you then start looking for significant and uh, rip, pleomorphism occupying a significant proportion of the lesion. Look for necrosis look for lymphovascular invasion, look for perineural infiltration, make sure there are no other features that worry you. But if it's just one or two simple, normal looking mitosis in a background of combined nevus, then I shouldn't worry about it too much. I hope this is of help with you, for you. Thank you very much.